What is consciousness? Well, consciousness is the awareness of internal and external stimuli, or basically it's the awareness of ourselves and our environment. It's our awareness in the moment, and we can only be truly conscious of one thing at a time because it requires concentration and effort. So to test this, go ahead and try. Try to tap steady like three times with your left hand and then do four times with your right. Maybe if you are a percussionist, you're better at this. Um, but it's difficult, right? Or even um, patting your head and rubbing your belly. Uh, but both necessitate your conscious thought, so it's very hard to do them both at the same time. Um, incredibly, though, we can still register and react to stimuli without consciously focusing on them. So once we've learned how to drive, for example, we don't have to consciously focus on changing gears all the time. Um, also, unconsciously, we respond to other people and we make judgments, um, we snap judgments very quickly um, without necessarily think about, thinking about things long or in depth. Um, we also vary through different states of consciousness throughout the day. Sometimes we're more alert, sometimes we daydream, we get drowsy, we sleep, um, but we also might alter our own states of consciousness by choosing to meditate, um, being hypnotized, or doing something like using drugs. Our bodies naturally fluctuate through biological rhythms, and so this includes yearly cycles, so think like hibernating bears. Also, there's 28-day menstrual cycles, which, um, sorry to break it to you, but uh, the fact that women PMS or get more ornery during this time has been debunked by psychologists, but um, it is still a cycle that our bodies go through. There are 24-hour daily cycles, known as circadian rhythms, and also 90-minute sleep cycles. Um, so circadian rhythms, particularly, um, they describe how our body uh, really has this 24-hour cycle of alertness, body temperature, and arousal. And so our body temperature rises as morning approaches, it peaks during the day, it'll dip in the afternoon, and it'll drop before bed. And so we are most alert and we can perform better at our peak in circadian, uh, circadian arousal. So you can actually track your own rhythms, you can take your temperature throughout the day, um, and you can you probably already know a time of day that you work best. Um, so hormone secretion, blood pressure, body temperature, and even urine production all have circadian rhythms. So you may even find yourself having to use the bathroom at the same time every day, and this is why. Um, we do, uh, unfortunately though, uh, now have lots of artificial light that keep us up later at night. So our ancestors, before they had artificial light, they probably got better sleep and were on a better rhythm than us as they followed just the natural night and day cycle. Um, but people most nowadays would be better suited to something like a 25 hour clock instead of 24 hours. And you'll actually notice this, that your circadian rhythm will get out of sync when you stay up late on the weekends and then you have to force yourself out of bed on Monday mornings. If you live to be 75 years old, you will have spent approximately 20 to 25 years of your life sleeping. So about one third of your life is spent asleep. Um, so psychologists want to know about this because think about it, they study mental processes and behavior. Well, they want to study our mental processes and behavior even while we sleep. So you might have heard things like sleepwalkers are just acting out their dreams, or some people dream every night, but I never have dreams. Well, these things have actually been proven false um, by psychologists. Psychologists first learned about sleep cycles when Eugene Azarensky, he was a grad student at the University of Chicago, he needed to test an electroencephalograph or an EEG machine that he needed to repair. And so he just hooked it up to his eight-year-old son while he was sleeping that night. And he actually thought that the machine was still broken because the machine was kind of going crazy. And keep in mind, EEG machines, they measure the electrical activity in the brain. So think back when you learn about the brain and how electrical charges are sent through neurons. Well, he noticed that the electrical activity would really speed up at different times during the night. But then he noticed it was occurring in a pattern about every 90 minutes. And sure enough, he discovered rapid eye movement sleep, or REM sleep, and further research showed that we actually pass through these distinct stages. And so you can see this here. This shows us this 90-minute cycle where at the beginning of the night we're more in a deep sleep and then we experience REM sleep about every 90 minutes. 
When we're awake, we exhibit beta brain waves, but as we start to get drowsy, the waves start to change to alpha waves. Then, without even realizing it, we sleep in a sleep or and we have theta brain waves. One really cool study by William Dement observed this transition between the slow alpha waves and the theta waves that characterize actually being asleep. So what he did is he asked a sleep deprived young man, he said, don't fall asleep no matter what. And he asked him to lie on his back with his eyelids, eyelids taped open and then he was told to press a button every time that a strobe light flashed into his eyes, which was about every six seconds. After a few minutes, he missed one of the flashes, and they asked him why, and he said there was no flash. But there was a flash, and he had missed it because he had fallen asleep, even without him knowing, just for two seconds, and he had missed it. And so uh, researchers can see that moment when we fall into sleep just by observing our brain waves. But during stage one sleep, some of our muscle tone is lost as well as most of our awareness of the environment and so some people might have a sudden jerk or a twitch or something like that um, or even some hallucinations during this first stage of sleep during stage two our muscular activity is slowing down even more and we're really not aware of the environment at all and so this is about half of the time that we are actually sleep and this type of sleep is characterized by a rapid burst of brain activity known as sleep spindles in stage three sleep you see there um, our brain moves to very long and slow delta waves and this is the stage of sleep when you see most sleep abnormalities like sleepwalking sleep talking nightmares or bedwetting um, and even in the deepest sleep, we're still aware of external world. So if like smoke enters the room, if we heard a cry of a baby, we're likely to react even though we are sound asleep, interestingly enough. Although a lot of these sleep abnormalities occur during stage three of sleep, these things don't actually happen during REM sleep. Even though our eyes are very alert and moving, this is the time when we dream, but this is not the time that we move. Our body is essentially paralyzed they call it paradoxical sleep because we're not going to be moving even though our eyes are and this is also the time where genitals are aroused and dreams or nightmares occur